How about some more of them beans, Mr. Taggett? French climbing beans, that is. In the shape of lazy housewife, these are called. Okay. Oh, they were. These are actually the uh, magic Mafinda beans that we've been growing for the last two years. But they were lazy housewife, I checked back in the back episodes. Took me ages and uh, found it. But they're going to be going in here. Simple bean pole TP type of an arrangement. These are some canes that we had. The canes are getting knackered now. I need to get some more canes later. They're all breaking and snapping and all sorts. I've had to sort of uh, cobble together these because the big, the big long ones were just snapping. But anyway, they range from about four and a half foot up to about six feet. And I'm going to be putting these uh, these beans into planting stations around the, and hopefully then that they'll uh, well they will do they always do they'll uh, they'll curl the way up the bean poles. I'm putting two to a station. Apart from this one, the only one that's been nipped is this this one. Yeah, such a shame, isn't it? A little shame for it. But we'll see how we get on with them. We're gonna get, we're gonna get them all in. All right. Dig a little hole, plant the bugger in. All right, there's the hole that I've dug with my badger-like paws. I'm just going to check that it's deep enough for to hold the plant, which it is. I'll put it that way like that, I think. Yeah, backfill around. thusly remove and then that's going to be taken out of its pot which you can't do one-handed without running the risk of damaging the plant and that's going to be planted into the like that you've seen it before on the channel um, if you've been a long-term viewer that is but if not then that's all you do you make the impression in the soil with the pot Dig your roll first, of course, make the impression. In she goes, firm around, or backfill around, set the pot out, take the plant out of the pot, pop the plant into the ground, and then continue to sort of firm it, uh, firm it in. That's going to get a drink of water, hopefully by God himself tonight, because we are due rain tonight, so I'm not going to bother watering it in as yet. Let God do it. If he hasn't done it last night, then uh, uh, or tonight, then I'll be down tomorrow morning to do it. But I'm going to carry on with those now and get them all in. And jobs are good. And... Yeah, like I said, that's the only one that was that had its leaf bitten off. I'm going to leave it anyway, see if it does come back. But it's going to be going in with its friend at the side here. Now I've just run out of lazy housewives. Luckily, I've got some Cosse de Violet. Those Cosse de Violet. I'm just going to get a couple of those and get them in. These seem to be coming along a bit further than the... Uh, the Guru beans, don't they? Planted at the same time, or sown at the same time. Let's get a couple of those in. And there you go. <coughs> there you go. It's easy as pie. They'll uh, wrap themselves around the poles. Hopefully all the way up to the top and produce hundreds of beans in the shape of French beans, which are the fine beans. You actually eat the whole bean or the, the pod with the beans inside it. Leave a few to, uh, to go to maturity and then you can harvest them at the end of the year. Take those and store them for next year, next year's beans. That's what we did with the uh, lazy housewife. That's it, easy, isn't it? Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Right. I'll show you what else I've been up to. Been uh, doing a bit of weeding, long overdue weeding, and it's been an absolute terror. Yippee! Another full bed of bloody weeds. I nearly swore properly then. Look at the state of that. Right, that's going to have to be sorted out because I want to get a net on that and I want to get brassicas in that. That is ridiculous. That's been about two weeks since it was done and look at it yeah, I'll tell you what, you turn your back for two minutes look at the state of the peas that's a pigeon that's landed straight in the middle of the peas and destroyed them god it breaks your heart unbelievable isn't it 
<laughs> it's a flaming jungle. I can't believe this. Obviously the soil is in such fantastic condition that it will grow the weeds to monstrous proportions in no time at all. So uh, that's my excuse. But it's got to be sorted out. Look at him. White devil. Now, what you see before you, boys and girls, is a uh, is an hour of human existence that uh, I'll never be able to get back. And I've got about another two and a half hours worth to squander. Most of that greenery that you still see there, that's uh, leaf that came off when I was pulling out the, the, the plethora of weeds of all dirt, oh god look at that, of various varieties we've got some horse's tail here it's full of bindweed, horse's tail, Christ knows what yeah it's, it destroys your soul I hate weeds, I detest them in all their forms and myriad displays, myriad displays. Look, I'm not finding though, I'm finding wood, I'm finding screws, I'm finding... Where's he gone? There was the most unusual red and black spider that will no doubt bite me shortly. But yeah, it's a constant battle. It's the, it's the, it's the trials of Sisyphus. Look him up, Sisyphus. And it never ends. Sisyphus was the guy, Greek guy, obviously, like he was punished by the gods to eternally roll a boulder up a hill or push a boulder up a hill. And it could never be stable on top of the hill, so it rolled back down again. And he had to do it forever. And that's weeding at this time of year. E. Right, let's see if I can do this. I'm going to be here all night. We're getting there, guys. We're getting there. Underneath that big pile of weeds, there's a wheelbarrow. Okay, so on our allotments, this is our tipping point. It's only supposed to be for vegetation and things that'll rot down. You know, small bits of timber, things like that, organic stuff. But as you can see, not everybody pays, plays by the rules, do they? Never mind, that'll be buried by me today, probably, underneath, underneath a mound of, uh, of weeds. I'll probably fill this valley today with all the weeds that I'm digging out. God damn. That was unbelievably full of weeds. All kinds of imaginable weeds. Organ nightmares. Horse's tail, bindweed, uh, thistles, everything with a long stabby root that goes about two feet down. That had it in it. Uh, stinging nettles as well. We had the uh, creeping daisy. Dandelion. Oh god, everything. It was all in the thistle. And there's only a few little bits and bobs knocking about left on top. Which hopefully... It's been a fairly sunny day today. I went over it with the hoe as well. So I hand weeded everything, went over it with the hoe. And that's what we're left with. It's reasonable that now. It, it would probably pass muster. Whereas on the weekend, it didn't pass muster. Still lots and lots of weeding to do. But as I say, I've weeded those two beds there. We'll get these ones sorted out as we go forward through the next week or two. But, uh, yeah, it's ridiculous. Can't keep on top of it, to be honest, at the moment with working and that. That's all been cleared out, all the veg from that side. Got monstrous kale. In there. Got some good kale there. I'll be checking some of that because it started to bolt. Um, but we're going to try and uh, get as much, of, as much of that kale as we possibly can and try and get some more green soup done with it check out the green soup on the channel if you haven't already it's good we've got lots of uh, broad beans look at that widow's delight there's tons of them i'm gonna take a load of that tonight i think because it's coming to the end of it now there's no more flowers coming on look at that critter 
some sort of strange bee. Um, so they're going to come out. I'm going to take a bucket of them, get them all off, I think. Um, clear that space. Yeah, look at the bloody weed. There's absolute tons of weeds to do. Tons and tons. These are yellow raspberries. These. They're actually ripe now. Mmm. They're actually up. They're actually too sweet for me, those. Those yellow raspberries. Excuse me, they're like toffees. I've been told to get some strawberries as well, so I'll have a look if we've got any strawberries on. We have. We've got a few knocking about. Yeah. Masses of growth. These are our main crop uh, potatoes, or, or, or one set of them over there. They're the Sarpo Mira. In here. I've been taking the flowers off because if you take the flowers off then the energy goes to the tuber rather than to the, the flowering and seed production. The tip from Tony O'Neill there at Simplify Gardening, the guy you saw last week. I've got tons of potatoes though as you can see, we've got loads and loads, but I've really got to get some of this weed in done. It's ridiculous. Buried under there, a couple of cars yet plants. It's unreal, isn't it? Look at the state. It's unreal. Got some courgettes there. Might take the courgettes as well and try and dig into that. In fact, I will. A yellow one and a green one. We're hiding underneath all that uh, mess over there. Right, let's get harvesting these broad beans. I'm optimistic because I've got this great big bucket here. This gigantic bucket. Let's see if we can fill it. A census taker tried to test me once. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. Now I'm going to call that a bucket full. Bucket full of it. Look at that one. My kids call them willy, bean, willy beans, these. But they are broad beans or fava beans if you're from North America. Or certainly from the States. Let's have, uh, let's have a look at one. Willy beans. Don't ask why. Now, believe it or not, broad bean leaf is actually edible. But uh, I don't fancy that, do you? It's all covered in manky holes and, and whatnot. And it's past its best. I just get them for the beans themselves. But I believe they are edible. The leaf is edible. Um, I've just never done it. So I'm going to take all of that up to the top, up to the tip, and continue to fill in the valley. Look at the state of these uh, tomatoes here. I've pinched them out now at the top. Apart from that one. I'm going to let that one go on a little bit. And then pinch it out, but there's a, there's a load of tomatoes on. It's doing really well. In fact, they are doing really well, these four in here. In contrast to the ones that are in the original Tiki Tunnel. Tiki Tunnel 2, the Lady Farmer's Tiki Tunnel. is weeing all over them. The leaf is perfect. The blossoms are on and the producing fruits. Fruits are plenty. In fact, we've got some already. They're ready. So, yeah, we have got tomatoes. We're doing all right with the tomatoes. I've took all the cucumbers off over the last couple of days. Off um, the two at this side. and there were, I think there were two on that one. Only one on that small one. One on that one and three on that one. And that one's doing the best at the moment, although this leaf issue is a bit of a worry. Not overly concerned at the moment with it, but yeah, it's still getting cukes. Cukes are plenty, is what we like to say. I've just, I've just given them a water. About every three days, I'll just fill those up and then let it drain down in. So that's two litres per side. It's getting every couple, every sort of three days. 
Um, and the same with these over here. And it just keeps that moisture in the ground. These are the, these are the uh, Paris Island Cos lettuce. That started to bolt, that one. Um, I took one yesterday and we had it with our tea as a salad. So I might well take another one tonight because it was good. Here's the peas. The indoor peas climbing up. Yeah, by contrast to this side, it's uh, the leaf curls a massive issue in here. And I have been, I have reduced the watering quite a lot. But I don't know, I think I might have uh, damaged them a little bit too much. Let's have a look in the top greenhouse, see how things are progressing in there. I know when I came back on the plot after 10 days' absence, this had happened. Heck of a lot of little bug damage. Some little moth or, or other, the larvae of it, I'm guessing, has attacked that. The cat little tiny caterpillars have attacked them. Um, I don't think I've got anything on one No, I don't think I've got any, any fruit on there. A couple on here, I think. Yep, yeah, there's a couple of bell peppers in there, stashed in the middle. Some corn di toro rosso. That one's a corn di toro rosso, but it's not, uh, it's not produced anything, has it? I think it was attacked savagely by the beast. We've got some corn ores on there, haven't we? And there's another bell pepper on the end. Little bell pepper. With a couple of little bell peppers on it. Right, so, sun gold suckers. These were the suckers that we took off from the original plants out of Tiki Tunnel 1. And the original plants that have been atrociously badly. These ones seem to be doing okay. We are getting fruits potentially coming on them, but I'm certainly getting flowers coming on them. I take out the suckers as you find them. If anybody still yet doesn't know what a sucker is, it's a little side shoot coming out from the uh, the crook of the elbow. They don't particularly do anything nasty to the plant but they do sap energy from it so we want to single stem them up here and get them as a tall plant with the vines on if you sort of watch they don't get rid of the vines instead of the uh, instead of the suckers so keep an eye out for that but that's a sucker and it's coming off any more suckers i did have a sucker pogrom on the weekend when i got back on the sunday and I think I've got the majority, but there are there, you, you, never, you never catch them all. They're a bit like potatoes that you leave in the ground. But again, they've had a, a two litres each today. They'll, they'll not get another one now until probably Saturday. But yeah, it's looking all right. Those baskets of fire. As, 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 well, they're just doing what they say on the tin, they're turning into those baskets of fire and they're absolutely full of peppers, full of blossom. These chilli peppers don't seem to be affected too much by the little, the little grubby, little, grubby little pest that's been chomping away at me standard peppers, but uh, yeah, these are doing great in the buckets. Watering tray, buckets, Tesco, no, sorry, Asda cup flower buckets they were. Just a little bit of blood fish and boning, small handful in, with a standard compost, and away they've gone. They're doing great then. All the little chilli peppers sticking the willies in the air, waving them about. Good stuff. Okay, if I don't see you through the week, I'll see you through the window. This has been Guru Mafinder, and uh, thanks for stopping by. I can only apologise for my absence, but uh, you know, you've got to do other stuff, haven't you? Um, I'll be coming down for about an hour every night from this point onwards. So, um, yeah, and then I'll be back down on the weekend. I'll do a full day on the weekend. It's the weeding that's getting me down at the moment because, you know, if you don't come down for 10 days, the weeds just take over completely. And uh, that's no fun, is it? So, get stuck in, keep your chin up, keep your pecker up. And uh, we love you all. All right. 
If you've been a lady, you've been uh, beautiful, fragrant and fantastic. If you're a gentleman, you've been forthright, masculine and virile. And uh, I've been good and my finder, signing out. Tatty Pip. Keep growing with your heads down. All right. Take care of yourselves and each other's boys and girls. Until next time, bye-bye.